This Blade Runner RPG is a game played by adults and contains content intended for a mature audience. The game addresses dark and difficult themes that may be uncomfortable or upsetting to some viewers, including, but not limited to, violence, strong language, loss of autonomy, and sexual content. All of the participants have discussed their zones of comfort at length and have safety tools at their disposal. Please use caution when viewing and be sure to take a break if you feel the need. Thank you, and we hope you enjoy the game. Pure chaos, pure craziness. In case you didn't know, this game is rated TVMA. It's going to get out of hand. It has gotten out of hand. In fact, I don't think it ever was in hand, unlike Big D Creep. Um, Ouch. Yeah, I know. Hi. For the Superior Adventures Guild, although the Superior is debatable, I guess, at this particular juncture, but here we are. We are thrilled to have you join us as we embark on episode seven of eight wow. of our short shot Blade Runner, a free league publishing game. I do believe the game comes out on December 13th. Uh, it's pretty damn awesome. We've been having a really good time with it, so uh, should feel free to check it out once it comes out if you weren't uh, part of the Kickstarter. It's a great game. Like all the products, the, the, the core books are always, always pretty pretty excellent um so the blade runner world for those of you who've not been following us uh or and not seen any movies exists in the not too distant future in our case 2037 uh it's one where androids called replicants have taken their place in society they're not mechanical beings they're made of synthetic flesh and bone and need to eat and sleep just like any other human the theme of what it means to be humans at the center of the book and the films and features prominently in this campaign also I have some truly wonderful, debatable, I should really change that because I don't know if that's true anymore because you guys are making me re-question my entire life. But, Would you like to master debate that, sir? No, oh no, thank you. God. No time now. We are playing a game, Creep. Uh, so yeah, a bunch of people, random strangers that I don't know are joining me at the table tonight. Uh, in our discussions, we did agree that we all want to take a deep, dark dive into this world, explore things that may perhaps... Be a little uncomfortable at times. Lord knows I'm uncomfortable every time I'm on stream. But everyone here, they clearly established comfort zones. We have safety tools on hand to get us along, make sure everything's okay, but who knows what's going to happen. Uh, I'd like to introduce you this gang of reprobates uh, before they cause any more chaos and mayhem. Hey! Chaos. Um, as you can see, as you can see, they are very suspicious looking people. Um... Very dubious. Can confirm. Can confirm. Looking people. Um, thanks for still being here. Seven games into this thing. I imagine you'll all quit before game eight and just leave me on my, you know. But remember, I know Solo stream. what's going to happen. So you're the ones who are going to be like the rest of your life wandering around going, I wonder what was going to happen. Because I know. <laughs> Sorry, I got to go. <laughs> Peace out. Got to split. Got to scram. How about we start with some introduction? We'll start with the least suspicious of you all, the woman who pushes cotton candy oh. all of our followers. The um, candy maker extraordinaire, Huli, the hooligan in chief. Very How are you sus. doing, Huli? Your your name is hooligan, yet you're less of a hooligan than... than, than... Yeah, um, that's because I'm only a facilitator of chaos and hooligantry at Heroes and Hooligans. I try to be on my best uh, hooli behavior other places. You know? You know? Not that we could say the same for <clears throat> other folks. Not going to mention. Hey, David. But and hi, I friends. See ya. I'm going to be a uh, trip ball soon. So that's going to be exciting. And that's me, hey. hooli, ball tripper. She trips over balls. Well, some, some yeah. of us have big, some of us have large balls. And moving on. Oh, my oh, my God. God. <laughs> oh my God. Hey. Or Twitch like... shuts, us down, shuts us down. Yep. <laughs> Introducing <laughs> next. Folly balls. Come on. If ever we do get shut down by Twitch, the person will most <laughs> likely be responsible for it. The creep show is started in there. Darling creep show. How you doing, darling? <laughs> Me? Big Me? D. Never. I do you see this halo? I'm a little baby angel. Mm -hmm. Uh just That's remember, you guys halo. wanted me here. <laughs> did we invite her in? We did. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Invite a vampire in or they can't come in, man. <laughs> That's true. 
Yep. Yep. I can only come if you invite. Um, so my name is Darlene Creepshow. I'm just your resident creep on Twitch. Uh, I am a part-time emotional terrorist, uh, full-time streamer, and I play TTRPGs like D&D and Blade Runner, and I also paint D&D miniatures. So uh, yeah, you can find me everywhere across the interwebs as Darlene Creepshow. Sewing, chaos, disruption, horror, everywhere. Yeah, yeah. And I'll be playing Phyllis Diedrichson tonight. Just yeah, your average replicant. There's nothing strange about her. Uh, totally cool, chill lady. <laughs> totally, totally not sus at all. Nope. We're still happy to have you. Thank you so much for being here. I don't think I said that, but we're super happy to have Huli also. I don't think I, I said that. Huli's not even listening anymore. She's like, hey, Game Master, go away. <laughs> Speaking of not listening and setting fire to everything in sight, huh? Dr. Dave. Hello, Dr. Dave, everyone. Welcome to uh, my doctor's office. Uh, prepare for your examination. Just kidding. I'm You're off doctor, duty. What? I'm off duty. I'm a doctor of uh, diabolism. Is that a word? It is it now. Is now. <laughs> hey, everybody. I'm uh, Dungeon Dave. I play games, produce games, and run games here on Guild Superior. I'm lucky to be able to play games with this awesome table of folks. Uh, I've got a game on Tuesday night that I run with another great group of folks, our Greyhawk game uh, in uh, playing D&D 5th Edition. A uh, bunch of other great games on our channel, including another uh, sh game run by Christian, our Shade Song game. We've got a new Varden game that just started up on Wednesdays. Uh, we've got our Monday Night Mayhem that's uh, tomorrow. I always do it backwards, it seems like. Uh, Monday Night Mayhem tomorrow with uh, our good friend Kev Run Games, who will be yeah. um, getting us into some good stuff. Bleak is frozen, and, uh, and away we go. How am I frozen? Can you hear me? You're back. Yeah. There I'm he back. is. It was just all head. It was all head. Just giving us head, bud. Yep. The way to go. Oh my god. Here we go. Uh, thanks everybody <laughs> for being here. Uh, we only have two more uh, episodes left. Whew. Thank God. <laughs> cheers. Um, cheers. Um, it's your fault, Dave. You're the one who takes everything out of context with your filthy mind. That's true. I do have Jeez. a. I do have a lot of contextual issues. People with minute from Minnesota, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. back to um, you bleak black back back to me hey um due to uh some uh unforeseen scheduling issues fortunately omar is playing flizzard will not join us tonight or for the next game uh we super love omar it's no stress no drama just real life gets in the way sometimes uh we'll be continuing on and we'll keep him at the headquarters doing papers no that's not true we're gonna see what what happens to omar um Lizard, sorry, not Blizzard, but uh, Fadir tonight. Uh, but yeah, where we are with that. Uh, all right, a couple more uh, little shout outs before we dive into this thing. Um, I would like to thank uh, Cryo Chamber for the sweet sounds that are currently assaulting your ears, not Creep and Dave and Holy's voice, but the actual music that's playing. Uh, Albert Rodeo, which we use for the VTT, and Solution Maps Patreon. For the incredible maps uh, that you're going to see here tonight. I'd like to give a shout out to Ashley and Andy, the production crew at Guild Superior, and to Miko for his help with some of the art that's featured in this game. If you want to join all the awesome players and friends in our Discord, follow the links popping off in the chat. We'd love to have you join us. We're not always like this. This is literally just a Sunday Blade Runner thing. We're usually pretty, you know, no, we're not. Uh, finally, thank you for your for coming on this dark little ride with us. We appreciate each and every one of you. You can catch up on all the previous Blade Runner episodes as well as all our other games on VOD on our YouTube channel. Check it out. There's a lot of stuff there. There's probably stuff for you to watch for like 10 years on there. Because, you know, we play games. That's what we Lots do. Lots of games. Lots of games. That's what we do. When last we uh, saw our intrepid investigators, which was a couple of weeks ago, actually, because of uh, various... Uh, holidays and so on and so forth well unless we saw you guys um i do believe that uh this had been happening uh sark had received a phone call from fadir uh saying he needed uh, her help for backup i uh, give her an address of a motel in a slightly deserted part of town 
and Sark, because she's a conscientious um, investigator, took a whole bunch of Deep Echo, uh, which is a hallucinogenic a synthetic drug that tends to have a pretty deep effect on replicants. So who knows what's going to happen with that? Um, <clears throat> just before that, um, Phyllis, you had encountered, uh, you had seen rather on uh, a video that had been played for you, a person that, that you know, you don't know her name, but you know where she comes from, someone from your past uh, who had gone and assassinated Aiden Swain, who was one of the um, scientists working for um, Aster Lambros, the head of the Dawnstar uh, Corporation, um, and had murdered him sort of in the same way that the other people that you've been investigating had been murdered, uh, but had basically uh, allowed the camera to catch her face, which just happens to look uh, remarkably like yours. You then got a message saying that father wanted you to um, do one small favor for him, and if you did, you could come back into the fold, and that favor was to assassinate Aster Lambros, um, who you just had just discovered uh, a little bit before was pretty much the target of the murders that had been happening. The people that had been killed had all been people related or connected to her in some way. And she made her first um, public appearance just recently at a sort of TED talk uh, from the future where she had announced that uh, they were getting ready to release a brand new type of replicant in the coming year uh, that would surpass even supposedly the Nexus 9 product um, being marketed by Wallace Corporation. And then we capped off that evening by watching Twitch. Unfortunately, angry at how things had gone in the interrogation of Aster Lambros, walked out in the huff in the street only to be tagged and bagged and thrown in the back of a van uh, and taken for a ride somewhere by, by, by people whose identity we're not 100% sure of yet. And that pretty much covers it. It's all downhill from here. Any questions before we proceed? <clears throat> So how about we start then with you, Phyllis. You have, <clears throat> at this point, had a couple hours to process um, what happened when you saw um, this other person looks like you knew from your past, as I was saying, having murdered Aiden Swain. Uh, you yourself have a connection with Aiden Swain. You know about it. It hasn't been explored yet. We're not going to talk about it too much. But uh, the fact that he was murdered and that your face basically is caught on there. And there was something written on the wall. Um, of the murder room. Uh, I'll reread that just quickly. It was, what matter where, if I still be the same, and what should I be, all but less than he whom thunder hath made greater? Here at least I shall be free. The father hath not built here for his envy, and will not drive me hence. Here I may reign secure, and in my choice, to reign is worth ambition, though in hell, better to reign in hell then serve in heaven had been painted on the wall in Aiden Swain's blood. Um, and you had been given a task. What has Phyllis been doing in that time? Uh, so I imagine that she's kind of packed herself like a little overnight bag, uh, gathered a few uh, things, uh, change of clothing, and the first thing she's going to do is uh, make her way to the hospital to go visit with Jer to make sure he is okay. Yeah, Jer, um, who had been, um, the last time you saw the person in the video uh, was when she had broken into your home and had uh, injured Jer, uh, who had come to check on what was going on in the house. And you'd found Jer basically uh, passed out on the floor, right? Right. So you'll head out to um, a clinic and uh, obviously uh, both Jer and, and Beatrice being people who live sort of underneath the radar of society, they don't have necessarily, uh, you know, social identification numbers or insurance or anything like that. So they, they've found themselves in a little uh, pay by the hour clinic um, in the downtown core. When you arrive, you can see Jer. Uh, is lying in a bed. Uh, it looks like they've 
um, done some work on him, but he appears to be uh, very groggy and kind of out of it. And, and Beatrice uh, is there with him. And you can tell that uh, you remember when you had uh, found him uh, and that called Beatrice for help. Uh, Beatrice had run up from her club and she's still now dressed in her uh, in her, her her gown that she wears when the club is open. So she you realize she hasn't gone home at all uh, since yesterday when this happened and she's still sitting by his bed. And so when you walk in, she looks up and she goes, uh, what day is it? What time is it? Oh, I think I dozed off. How long has it been since the incident occurred at this point? With Jer? Yeah. That would have been like within 24 hours. Within 24 it was, hours? Yeah, it was a few shifts ago, yeah. It was like three shifts ago. So it would have been like around this time yesterday, basically. Um, And I would say she'd probably come in, in, the, in the morning is when Phyllis is doing this. Yeah. The next okay. morning, sure. If you yeah. want. Yeah, whatever you want. I mean, if that makes sense. I'm just trying to make sense of the storyline where we're at. Yeah, so... Uh, all of this had happened. You Thanks, see the, uh, the the news report and Twitch getting uh, grabbed was after your shift when you interrogated Astor Lambro. So it would have been in the evening uh, that that happened. Mm -hmm. um, so do you wait until the next morning to go? That That's what I'm saying. But the actual event where he got knocked out was the previous day when you were coming home from your shift. So it was 24 hours before that. So... As of the moment when you saw the news report, it had been about 24 hours since he'd been, or 18 hours, 18 to 24 hours since he'd been knocked out. So yeah, I would say I would say she would get some rest that night, and and she she would have spent the night thinking about what her next moves would be and planning things out a little bit. And then yeah. her first thought is to go check on Jer in the hospital before she goes any further with her plans and what she wants to do with the situation. So yeah, I would say it's probably that. early in the morning. Okay. that she's showing up since it happened um so when she walks through the door she's holding her fish bowl she's brought it from her house with her and she kind of sets it up on one of the uh i imagine there is probably some shelving or something in there like a desk or some something like that it's it's a clinic room yeah, yeah. um she kind of pushes it up there and and she's gonna make her way over to uh beatrix and uh, offer her a hug and and in response say uh no it's just it's 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 the morning i'm just coming to check on jer how have you been how has he been he's okay i guess and beatrice sits down and as she does she pulls off her wig and puts it down next to the you realize you've never actually seen beatrice without her wig and it's uh you know she's got the um the look and sort of demeanor in the plastic surgery in some ways that when she's like full on i remember describing her as kind of lady gaga like in her full you know yeah but now when when she removes the the hair uh and you know kind of uh, a, a, an entire day at the hospital spent here and sort of crying all that she she really just looks like a, a very uh frightened boy in some ways right yeah uh, and she's she's holding jerry's hand and she's like um he's been all right he's been out of it. They they say that damage wasn't permanent, but uh, it was pretty drastic. They're gonna have to make some. Um, I don't know. The doctor explained it, but I'm not very good with it, and I was kind of uh, in a bit of a state. But he's gonna be okay. It's just gonna take a little bit of time and a little bit of money to um, to do to to get this right. But I'll 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 see to him for sure. Like you know. I'll, Oh, I'll do whatever is needed. She kind of, you know, squeezes his hand. What? What are you up to? Are you going to work? Well, I'm. I'm gonna go on a little bit of a vacation. You know, things have been uh, really tense lately around the office, and I figured I, it's time maybe I took a little time off and. Had a little me time for a while, you know. It's 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 been hard lately. Maybe something you should do too, Beatrice. So you're trained enough uh, in in reading body language. When you say that, you kind of realize it doesn't sit very well with her. Like you you can kind of see that she's like, you're going on 
vacation with Jer lying here like this because because of you you're you're going on vacation that, that's what you're doing well you'll be here to look after him he'll be all right I promise I just I, I need to get away for a little bit I uh, would hope that if anyone would understand you would the person who did this are they going to come back after you because if they come back and they don't find you there but just find us are we in danger no not while i'm gone you'll be safe nothing's coming for you i'm sorry i'm sorry for this i just i'm just really tired she's gonna kind of like kneel down and put a hand on Beatrice's knee and to try and reassure her. I know you're tired. I'm tired too. But I just need you to be strong for Jer while he's healing. And I just need you to know that you'll be safe while I'm away. And, and try not to think about me too hard, okay? Did I ever tell you that it was Jer who came up with my name. Well, I always knew my name was Beatrice, but the Brussels part. Did I ever tell you that story? You haven't. Tell me. When I met him, I was... <laughs> Things weren't easy, and I didn't have a lot, and I didn't have anything, in fact. And I was eating very well, and I was very very small and a very waif like and he would call me sprout he always called me a sprout and then after a while when we finally managed to get the club going and i started feeling more confident in myself and i was able to take care of myself a little better uh i asked him one day first time i put on the whole Beatrice thing and I said am I still a sprout and he said of course you are but at least now you're a Brussels sprout <laughs> sweet old dear he's a good boy he is and I'm glad we don't have to say he was me too I love you both dearly I hope you know that take care of yourself now you you take care of yourself and we'll Jer. when you're willing to come back. Of course, and my fish, I brought them here. Maybe they'll keep Jer company like they've kept me company these years. We. You... He loves those fish. You know he talks to them, right? When you're not there and he goes to feed them. That's so sweet of him. I hope he'll look after them while I'm gone. We will. Don't you worry. She moves them a little bit closer to the light and sticks out the little food and she gives him a little pinch. But she doesn't turn around and she just goes, be safe. You too. Take care of each other. And she's gonna uh, lean down to Jer who I'm assuming he's he's unconscious, he's medicated well, he's, right now. He's like drugged out, basically. You can see that he's kind of like there. His eyes are kind of half open, but he's definitely... The lights are on, but, you know, no. Yeah. <laughs> Was anybody ever home? But <laughs> she's going to uh, like lean forward and, and stroke the side of his face. Uh, you behave yourself now, okay? Take care of Beatrice, my fish. And when you say that for a moment, there's a bit of a glint in his eye and he says, he was looking at you, kid. Yes. And she's going to lean forward and place a kiss on his forehead and exit the room. As you step out of the room, close the door behind you, Start walking down the corridor. You hear a voice 
It says, Ellis, when you <clears throat> turn towards the voice, you see it's <clears throat> Ernie's friend. Sorry, Twitch's friend, Ernie. One you've met a couple of times. Uh, his old partner. He looks a little bit banged up, like he took like a couple of hits, but he's sitting there in one of the chairs. He's like, I thought it was you. <clears throat> no one walks quite like you. Uh, and I mean that in the most respectful way. You remember me? Uh, Ernie, I'm uh, Twitch's ex-partner. Yeah. How have you been, Ernie? Oh. You know, just here keeping an eye on that one, but doing a pretty poor job of it. And he points at a door and you can see there's someone in a bed in one of the rooms. Who's in there? Um, the partner of one of your partners, I guess. Um, Sock. I see. She got banged up by some, some of that gang she runs with, I guess, or something. She's all right. <clears throat> She's going to make it through. It's just, you know, Twitch wanted to deny I kept on him. Just to make sure they were okay. I kind of fucked up the first time, but we'll be more careful now. I, um, you heard from Twitch? I, I tried calling him a couple times last night and I couldn't reach him. I saw him last night for a minute. Did you have he a... had some business, uh, but... He left around the same time I did from the headquarters. Not sure what he was off to do. Seems a bit odd, though, not like him. You called his home phone. Yeah, did he, um, did he have a rough day yesterday? Maybe he just tied one on and sleeping it off. I mean, we've all been having rough days, Ernie. Look, that's what the calendar is made of, right? Seems to be. Well, if you run into him, you want to tell him to give me a call just to check in? Yeah. Maybe I'll pop over there later tonight after I, I got some business to do, but I'll check up on him. Sounds good. Take care of yourself here. You too. Thanks, Ernie. Yeah. And uh, you will exit the, the clinic. Uh, where do you want to go next? Hmm, I think she's going to start uh, making her way to take care of some business. Okay. Business. Business. Some business. All right, speaking of Twitch. Um, Twitch, you got picked up by a couple of burly guys that you recognized as, as, as cops, and they grabbed you and they handcuffed you and they bagged your head and you threw in the back of a van and you drove around for a while. You tried to kind of keep track where you're going, but you're pretty sure they were kind of taking random turns. And after a while it got kind of disorienting and they wouldn't say anything. All you could smell really was like this cigarette smoke from uh, them, them smoking and some sort of foul odor in the back of this truck that you don't even want to know what it was. Uh, but you drove around for a while and eventually, um, the truck stopped and you were pulled out and you could definitely feel really cold air sort of blowing at you and smell a little bit of the ocean maybe on the air and then you got brought inside a, a structure of some sort it was kind of big cavernous and echoing and they dragged you in and then they sat you on the chair and they handcuffed you arms and legs to it and they left the bag there and they walked away um and and they left you sitting there for quite a while um do you do anything or do you wait to see what happens what, what do you want to do um i you know once they're out of the room or once i feel their presence gone i will attempt to like get out of the restraints that i'm in um the second you start kind of messing around with them you hear a voice that goes uh i have orders to shoot you in both kneecaps if you try anything stupid Yeah, that's uh, it's pretty good motivation to uh, sit still. Why don't you do that? Boss will be here any minute. You uh, at least help a fellow out with a cigarette, eh? Come on. 
No can do. Well, fuck you then. Fair enough. If you uh, need to pee or something, just go ahead. None of us are going to mind. Kinky. Some people pay for it. You can have it for free. <clears throat> They'll leave you sitting there for a good long while. You figure at least an hour. It's getting really cold. You're shivering. You got your coat and all, but uh, it's, it's quite cold in here. Um, after a little while, you hear a door open really kind of far off and that kind of far off sound clonk and then it reverberates through this this thing and you hear this a bunch of steps a few people sort of walking towards you am i blindfolded yeah you still have the okay. bag over your head at okay. this point all right uh, but as these steps approach you hear a voice that you recognize say uh has he been any trouble you recognize the uh the voice of Saul Grabowski. And uh, the guy that was talking to you really goes, yeah, just his usual self. All right, take take the bag off. What, what is this? Take the bag off. And someone just lifts up the bag and light. Psh, there's really bright lights in this place and just kind of assaults your eyes. So you're kind of trying to see what's going on. And you see sitting around just a couple of tables and sitting on them and kind of around you, there's about seven guys. Uh, they're all like, guys from Saul's unit, like really big, you know, hardcore muscle bounds. Or fellas, cops. fellas, fellas, if you wanted, uh, you wanted me to come over to your little party here, all you had to do was send me an invitation. The fuck is this, Saul? Always the funny word, Antwitch. <laughs> You're not looking so good. Uh, you look a little funny to me. What do you want? You got me. What do you want? Airline fractured the skull, attached retina, ruptured eardrum, two cracked molars, cracked occipital bone, fucking twitch. That's what you had for me. You know, I could have given those guys the order to kill you when you were assaulting me. Why didn't you? went through your head, man. Why didn't you? Cops don't do that to other cops, especially not when the other cops trying to fucking help your dumb ass. Yeah. Help, huh? You've been helping me the whole time, huh? By keeping things from me and my team? I don't think so, Saul. It's not for me to decide what your team knows and doesn't know. That comes from way up high. All I was <laughs> doing was telling you to leave well enough alone, but of course, fucking Twitch. You know me, huh? Yeah. I like to dig. Some people have fingers in the pies, but you just fucking jump right in face first, don't you? You can at least uh, cut me loose here so I can smoke a cigarette. I promise I won't break any more bones in your face. I ain't cutting you loose for shit, but if you want a cigarette, and mentions to one of his guys, and one of his guys comes over and puts a cigarette in your mouth. <laughs> Flicks the lighter, lights it. I'm sure an old pro like you can manage without his hands. Yeah. Well, uh, you got me right here, Saul. What what do you what do you want to do? How do you want this to play out? Well, we're just going to settle a few things and I'll take you right back home. We're not savages. You know, the thing I always wondered about you, Twitch, is how come you always stayed so clean? Fucking Twitch, always skating, right? A Teflon cop. So close to shit all the time, but somehow none of it ever sticks to you. Just just always a stench following you around, but you're clean, right? You're clean. You got nothing. I got a secret, Saul. I got a Man, secret for you. What's that? When I smell the shit, I don't stick around to play with it. I keep moving. You should mm -hmm. try it sometime. Well, the job is kind of shit, Twitch. You kind of can't get away from it unless you want to turn in your badge. So maybe, maybe it's something you should have done. You're not wrong there, Saul. Hmm. Well, you know, I got an idea, Saul. Why don't uh, you, 
Why don't you take this badge here? Come on. Come and take it. You can keep your badge, man. Tell me, I got I don't got a problem with you as a cop. I mean you get away with stuff, that's fine, that's great. You know, power to you. You're an old timer like me. You know the way things are supposed to go, and I respect that. I got a lot of respect for you, Twitch. I do. But when you do what you did, it's not the way things are settled in front of my men. And you hit me once, twice, okay, maybe I get it. But then you just went fucking bonkers, man. What was that? I, I don't think you're right in the head is what I'm saying. But still, you're a fellow cop, fellow officer. Blue's got to look out for Blue, right? That's right, Saul. You always look out for other people, your old partners? I know you looked out for Ernie. I look out for Ernie. Ernie looks out for me. He's a good man. You don't need to bring him into this. I don't got a beef with Ernie. Just wondering how you how it is that you always end up next to people that do the weirdest shit and yet it's like you're like you're a miracle baby or something. Remember your that old partner of yours that went on that rampage back in the day, shooting all those replicants in the subway? You sure shit didn't shoot anyone, but you didn't stop him, did you? Fucking Kurt. Whatever happened to Kurt anyways? How should I know that punk? Look, I uh, I don't know what you what you're hinting at here. Uh, I don't know what the fuck Kurt's doing. What cares about Kurt? I'm just trying to illustrate a point. But look, get to it then, would ya? I got places to be. I got you. I just wanted you to know, Twitch, that. You're done skating, at least on this one. I'm going to do you a solid, all right? On account of you're one of the old gang. I'm going to handle this myself. The brass don't need to find out. Tell me something, Twitch. You a righty? I'll spit the cigarette out on the ground. Yeah, that's right, Saul. That's right. All right. Well, I'd never leave a fellow officer unable to defend himself, so he looks over at one of the other guys, and two of them kind of move in on you and grab you, and yeah. you see one of them pull out from under his jacket a small ball-peen hammer. <laughs> and they come around behind you, and they grab your hands, and one of them splays open your left hand and puts it up against the back of the chair. He's like, still be able to shoot, still be able to take care of yourself. But maybe next time, before you come, gun slapping some guy around who's trying to help you. Maybe you'll think twice, right? Maybe. Close your mouth. You don't want to bite down on your tongue. And as he says that, the guy in the back just starts hammering your left hand with the ball-peen hammer. Three huge strikes, and your hand is just crushed between the hammer and the back of the chair, and you can just hear the bones not cracking just being reduced to smithereens just your hand liquefying basically as they're hammering it three big hits like that on the back of your hand then Saul lifts up his hand then he goes comes over looks at it Jesus Christ Twitch this thing's starting to look like roast beef give him one there just for good measure and the guy wails in in your ribs with it and just like buries that hammer deep in your ribs and you feel them snap and just push inside of you and the pain just shoots right through you. It's just, you're gasping, you're trying to breathe, but the broken ribs just make it impossible. <clears throat> That's it, Saul. That's it. <laughs> yeah, you're a tough guy. All right, guys, let's get out of here. Before I came in, I called your buddy Ernie. He's going to come and get you. Just wait for him patiently, would you? He takes the keys to the handcuffs, puts them on the table for Ernie when he gets here. Hope the guy doesn't catch too much traffic. See you around, man.
him and his guys walk out. I'm going to do my best to remember every single one of their faces as they take a look back at me as they leave the, the space. So some of them you know, so it'll be uh, it'll be doable. As he's leaving, your and you're left alone with your thoughts here a little bit. Thinking back to what he said about your buddy Kurt killing all those replicants in the subway, and you don't remember that. You remember him shooting one. You remember an altercation where he shot a replicant. Uh, on the subway. Fucking but you don't Kurt remember Northrop. killing a whole bunch of people. Yeah, Kurt Northrup, he... That didn't ring a bell to me. Like, I know the guy. I've worked with him. I, he was a shit person. But... Um, mass murdering replicants uh, doesn't... It doesn't jive with what I remember. About a half hour later, front door will open. You'll see Ernie's head kind of look inside. He's got his gun out. Like Twitch? Yeah, I'm in so here, I Ernie. I'm in here. Any of those fucking clowns left around here? Nah, they left. He walks in, keep an eye out. Keys on the desk. He grabs the keys. The hell did you do, man? Comes around. You know me, Ernie. Uh, just always oh. making friends. Shit, twitch your hand, man. Yeah, don't look at it too long. Ugh. I don't even know if I'm gonna be able to take the damn bracelets. Uh, hold on, it's probably gonna. Uh, I'm probably better at leave, leaving it there. Man, your entire arm swole up around the. Uh, all right, I'm just gonna leave it there for now. Just gonna leave it there. No, 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 Ernie, do it. Do it. It's gonna hurt like a some bitch. I know. All right. We don't take it off. I could lose the hand. It. Yeah. All right. I'm gonna pull on it. All right. Hey, by the way, I saw your friend Phyllis uh, at the hospital a minute ago. Oh yeah, how's Phyllis doing? Yeah, she's got a great ass. You ever get into that? And as you're like, what? The he pulls ah. on the thing. Sorry, man. Sorry. She's trying to distract you. You could feel like when you pulled on that thing, like it was holding onto it and you felt the skin kind of rip and no disrespect to your friend. I was just, you know, trying to Yeah, Ernie, I got you. Fuck. He drops the thing. Come on, man. Get up. He helps you up. Oh, we're gonna need to take you to the hospital, bro. I got some med, med gel in a car, but I got to need a whole checkup. Yeah, let's just get out of here, Ernie. I, I got to check on the on the team. I got the shit going down here, Ernie, and this fucking sidetrack here. This is just a, a little potty that went a little, got a little wild. <clears throat> There's work to do. There's work to do. You know, there are better ways to party, like, you know, little sandwiches cut into triangle, and beers, bowling yeah. party. Ernie, I wasn't being serious. It wasn't a party. Oh, you weren't being serious, were you? I miss you, man. I miss you. I'm right here, buddy. I... Come on. Phyllis is quite nice, though. She's very friendly. Yeah, she's a, she's a good cop. The cop. <clears throat> He'll take you out, get you in his car. Do you realize you're out by the Sepulveda seawall? Which is why you were smelling the water. And you can see this huge wall that's just, you know, a hundred feet up into there. And it's the only thing that's keeping this entire city from flooding. Like it's the only thing that's keeping that water at bay. This this giant wall. And honestly, it's huge, but it almost feels like it's made of paper as you're looking at it now. It, all that water just, you know, threatening to come in. I'll get you in his car. He'll start driving back into the city. 
Meanwhile, not too far from there. Sark. How you doing? You uh, well, you know, just riding along. Had to see my buddy. Feeling all right, relaxing a little bit. You drive out to the hotel where Fadir told you to meet him. You get there and it's this little out of the way place near the Sepulveda water wall, in fact. You don't know it, but you're only a few blocks away from where Twitch is currently. You pull in, you check around, you don't see his car. There's a couple other cars parked in front of some of the various uh, motel rooms. You don't see him. You took the deep echo maybe about 20 minutes ago at this point. You're not feeling anything yet. It's a bit of a dud, actually. You pull up, park your car, and sit there and sort of wait for Fadir to to show himself. You're hanging out for a while. Get the radio on, maybe. Station with some old classics. They even got Jefferson Airplane playing at some point. It's kind of weird out here. I mean, you know it's a deserted area, but when you see some tumbleweeds roll by, it's it's really not something you normally expect. Light's weird, too. It's kind of like everything is blue, but there's like these shafts of really powerful yellow light that are coming down straight from the sky and just illuminating. You know, like you might see on the stage when the stage is black and there's just like a few spotlights. Feels really weird, especially now that you're no longer sitting in a car and you're just kind of sitting on the floor. Like there are no more cars around. You feel introspective, chilling, vibing, you know. You really wish there was a street light or something. The only thing that you can see is like a row of vending machines and the lights are just going on like it's a casino and it's like, you know, they're just sort of blinking and going all over the place and it's kind of making you a little dizzy, actually. It's kind of messing with you a little bit. You can swear you're hearing voices coming from all the different motel rooms. Different people speaking different languages. They're sitting there, kind of taking all this in, feeling like you're sitting in jail or something. Like it's got like some support, but it's really kind of weird. You see this little creature kind of like a cross between a a rabbit and a badger or something and kind of comes running across and then it stops it turns and it looks at you then it looks at the ground and it starts picking up rocks then you hear like chattering and you see like another dozen of these things just kind of come hopping in so they all get around the circle, they all kind of stop and look at you, and then they start pulling out rocks from the ground. And then one of them screams something and then points over in the distance, and then they kind of run away. Then you're sitting there for a while, and the water's fine. You've never been on a boat before, so it's kind of weird to be on one right now. But it's a nice big boat. The waves are very gentle, and kind of rocking you back and forth and you know it tastes fine it's not like you've ever had something like this before but you're eating it now and licking your fingers and reminds you of something something from your past maybe something like that I can remember when you used to ride your tricycle you know down the driveway and you'd look around and all your friends would be there right under pogo sticks, just sort of jumping around you. Feels really weird that your friends are here jumping around you on pogo stick because you're sitting on the ground. 
watching these little creatures climb up all over. You're probably tripping. Yeah, probably. What would you like I to think, do? Uh, <clears throat> I would like to lay back flat on my back, like uh, making snow angels stare up at the sky. It's really funny you do and that. And... Like... Sorry, go ahead. I'm going to just be like, I think Fadir can wait and just chill for a minute. Fadir. Kind of trying to figure out, like, why, what, you know? There's something about Fadir you remembered. You're not sure what it was now. There's something about Fadir. It's on the tip of your tongue. You stick out your tongue and you're lying there and looking at the sky and you stick out your tongue and there's like this weird little bug on it. And the bug kind of looks at you funny. And it's like... Then it kind of crawls down and sort of walks away and disappears off into the dirt. When you look up into the sky, you can see that the sky is reflecting you and you can see yourself making the snow angel in the dirt. For some odd reason it makes you think of phyllis you're not sure why but and you hear a voice are you okay do you need help oh no i'm great i don't you need anything don't seem to be doing so hot yeah, maybe some water in a uh, uh, chicken salad sandwich if you got one. Not the kind with the cranberries or celery, though. Just just the chicken. Hmm. I'm afraid I don't have any of that. This phase uh, comes into you. This phase comes into you on top of you, and you see this man that I've put on the uh, the Albert Rodeo. Oh my. Come on, let me give you a hand. He reaches down for you. They're probably going to start mm. throwing rocks soon. You're going to want to be able to move when they do. Why would anybody want to throw rocks? I don't know. They that just be... turn up and do that once in a while. Who knows why anyone does anything, really? All right. Well, I don't need your help. I can do it. Okay. Who even are you? I'm not sure. When you, when you look up, you realize he's got like this huge bag, like two straps on it that was sort of on his shoulders and he's put it on the ground next to him. And it's like, do you mind if I sit here for a moment to uh, take a bit of a rest? I, I'm finding the, the weight of it a little bit much today. No, sure, sit down. You waiting for someone? I'm just going to look at him and smile. No answer to that. Hmm. Just saying you look like you have a lot on your mind. I know how difficult it can be sometimes to carry a burden alone. I feel like <clears throat> all of it's on your shoulders. You're the only one who can be responsible for it and <clears throat> can be demoralizing sometimes, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, come to think of it. I think I uh, do got a little bit of weight sitting out on my shoulders, you know? It's uh, hard to be the best looking one in your uh, company. Well, if that's I mean, the, my uh... friends are great and all, but I'm Sark fucking Ratcher. 
That's good. You know who you are. Yeah, but I don't know who you are. I asked you, though. Mm. What's up, buddy? I don't really know. I know I've been and here I'm a the while. One who's tripping. Sorry? I said, and I'm the one who's tripping. I know my name, but you don't know yours. I guess it's because maybe people call me whatever they want. I don't know. Most of the time I'm alone. It's it's really strange. I just most of the time I can feel people around me looking at me. Sometimes I can feel them helping me, but most of the time I just feel really alone. It's really alone carrying this this bag here. I don't even know what's in it. I don't even know where I'm going. I just feel like I have to walk, you know, just carry that burden. Just looking for a few friends to share and lighten the load. And I guess what else is there, right? Oh, friends are great. I love my friends. That's why I'm not stressed out, man. You should get some friends like mine. I have friends. They come and they go. I wouldn't say they're fair weather or anything, but <clears throat> some days they're there, some days not so much. And some days those fucking assholes start throwing rocks. I mean, that, that's really annoying. But you get through it. You look like you're feeling a little bit better than you did earlier. I've been feeling fine the whole time. I'm, I'm glad to hear that. All right, Sark Ratcher. It was uh, it's a pleasure to meet you. Yeah, uh... I would say it was a pleasure to meet you, but you didn't introduce yourself, so I guess we didn't officially meet. But uh, good luck on your journey. Hope you find some friends, and uh, if you find some chicken salad, let me know. I'm starving. I'll do just that. I'm not quite sure I know what chicken salad is, but it sounds delightful. He gets up. Oh, yeah. That's when you take a last night leftover rotisserie chicken, you shred it all up, you put it in a bowl, you add some seasoning, more than salt and pepper. You have to add like garlic, salt. You need to add a little bit of onion powder, celery if you like it. Texture throws me off, not me. You know, some walnuts, cranberries, if that's your thing. Mix in a little bit of uh, that Midwestern mayonnaise, whip it up, slap it on some bread, take a big old fat bite, chicken salad. God, I'm drooling now. Thanks for making me explain how delicious that sandwich would be. Well, you Ugh. know, sometimes yes. Yes. a clear memory of something is just about as good as the real thing. Oh, look, my pack's a little lighter. Had a good, uh, good influence on me there. Thank you for that. I hope you, uh, we find a chicken salad. Sounds heavenly. Take care, Sark Ratcher. He starts walking away, carrying his bag, and as he foretold, as soon as he kind of rounds the corner, you can see there's this vast desert ahead of him of just pure white sand and sunshine. And as soon as he kind of gets off into that, those little peckers start throwing rocks at him and he just kind of ignores them and, and keeps walking. Uh, are you okay, miss? You hear a voice saying next to you. Young woman's voice. <clears throat> you okay, miss? Uh, I'm sorry, yeah. it's just that yeah. you're lying there talking to yourself and I, I just thought maybe you needed help. Oh, no. Um, I was just kind of like thinking out loud, you know. About chicken salad. Yeah, going through a conversation that I'd like to have with my partner when I get home, trying to figure out how it's going to go. Uh, okay. Uh, just wanted to make sure you were right. Um, 
If you're in trouble, I think there are police officers in that room there. Oh, which one? I'll get up. That one over there? Room seven? Uh, my name's Iris. Oh, thanks, Iris. Uh... <clears throat> hey, how many's in there? Do you remember how many you saw go in? There's three of them. Three of them? Ooh. Three cops in one room. Yeah, no, I, I thought they were up to like, I thought that it was something sexual too, but uh, Fadir told me that it really wasn't. And he just, uh, he didn't even seem to want to really talk about it too much. So. Oh, Fadir's in there. Great. Actually, I'm here to see Fadir. Uh, appreciate you, Iris. And uh, I'll just give her whatever spare cash I've got in my pocket. I don't know, 20 okay. bucks or some oh. shit. Thanks. Uh, thanks. I appreciate that. I'm going to go get myself a chicken salad sandwich, actually. That sounds really good. Yeah. Wash it down with uh, nice Verner's. Perfect accompaniment. Uh, all right. Uh, thanks. I, I didn't catch your name. Uh... Uh, you can just call me. Uh... Yeah, uh, just don't call me. I'll see you later. Thanks, Iris. Okay. Um, if you see Fadir, say hi for me, okay? Uh, it's yeah. not a, we don't know each other like a business. We just, okay, um, thanks. And she walks off. So <clears throat> you're seeing the you hotel, just, the, um, you're seeing yeah. the parking, sorry, what? Yeah, uh, just don't call me. I'll see you later. So you, um, you see the parking lot sort of as it is now with the cars parked there. Things are still kind of blurry and kind of weird around. Like when you walk, it's got kind of that, like, you know, like in the movie when like it, it feels like it's kind of going like, like you're still feeling a little unsteady and there's a little bit of weirdness and sort of waviness around the edges of your vision, but you can sort of move forward. Yeah, and for door number seven? Um. <clears throat> I'm going to get the bottle of water that's sitting in the, you know, center console dispenser. Always mm -hmm. have water with me and just kind of like pour some in my hand and pat it on my face so I don't look like a complete mess. And, uh, you failed. Yeah, probably. But, uh, E for effort, right? That's right. E for effort. E for everyone. I'll make sure that. Even though I probably shouldn't um, attempt to operate it at this point, I will make sure that I have my gun on my side. You do. Aside from that, yeah, I'll be good. I'll walk up there. Um, we'll go back to Twitch here for a moment before we uh, continue with this whole thing. You're in the uh, in uh, Ernie's car. Mm -hmm. flying back towards your home and Ernie's like um, what's that all about anyways man yeah fucking Saul you know he, who knows what the fuck he's thinking and I'm I'm like looking I got my, my I got my badge still I look for my badge you got um, your badge and your gun my, my, my PKD is still on my on my belt yeah um, like uh, fucking Saul you know uh, I don't know he's an attitude problem and uh, fucking you got a cigarette? Uh, fuck. Uh, my, yeah, right my here. Rib, you okay, man? Uh, uh, my ribs. I got some don't, broken yeah, shit. Don't move yeah. too much. You don't want to pierce so long. It's just going to be that much harder to get you fixed. And he opens uh, the dash and he pulls out a pack of cigarette and puts it in your lap in your lap and gives you a lighter. This is when you I can, uh, I take my I take I lift my arm up and I like look at my left hand just the just a just a bad bludgeoned sight. yeah just disgusting and uh it's like uh yeah my my ring uh, uh, my ring ernie uh what you what my, my wedding band it's gone it's uh fuck you fuckers stole my goddamn ring what the uh, it probably got off. It, it probably got smashed when he hammered your hand, man. No, 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 no. Fuck. Look, man. Twitch. 
It's all right, man. It's just a fucking ring, you know? Let go. Yeah. Yeah, but I, you know, I told Nina I'd keep it. I I, I made a promise. Uh... Oh, Christ, Twitch, come on, man. All right, enough's enough now. Like, you fucking call me because you're getting smoked in the middle of the fucking... <clears throat> by a bunch of cops with a hammer but what the fuck's going on man like is everything spiraling out of control completely do you still have a handle on on your fucking life what's happening uh, ernie i look i i appreciate you helping me out and look if it's too much for you you can just just pull over and, and drop me too and much it's... it's not too much i'm just <sighs> I... god damn it you gotta let go, Twitch. It's all I got. Go. It's all I Good. got, Ernie. It's all I got is. It's not all you got. You think that's all you got, but it's not all you got. You gotta let go. The ring, man. Everything. Just let go. Okay. It's I... gone, man. I mean. Yeah. Look, I, I I know you've been trying to help me. Like, I've lost so much, Ernie, and I, I, I can't lose anything else. The, the ring, the... It's just a symbol. It's, it's just something, you know? It's something that keeps me connected to... Something that meant everything everything yeah but it's gone twitch and you can either be living in that past hoping for a call that's not gonna come a fucking postcard that's not gonna come we both know it's never gonna come ernie we both fucking know that i'm sorry man it's all my fault <laughs> It ain't your fault. It's me holding on to shit that... No, it's my fault, man. It's the drugs that are fucking you up. I shouldn't have let them fucking give you those fucking pills. I fucking knew it. I said myself, I said, Ernie, if you think it's going to help him now, it's going to fucking backfire. That shit always backfires. You have no clue what he's talking about. Okay, I was just about to ask if I knew what he was talking yeah, about. you have no yeah. clue what he's talking about. The fucking pills? The fuck you talking yeah. about, Ernie? What are you talking about? Look. The pills they gave you, man. After that whole thing with Kurt. Northrop? Again with this Kurt? Yeah. The whole thing. You d now, of course you don't remember. The fucking pills. That's probably what's still fucking you up, man. You can't deal with fucking what's going on. Like, the pills are just... Whatever those pills did to you back then, man, they're just still fucking misfiring your brain. Still hearing voices? Oh. Still seeing things? No, I... Hearing voices? There's no voices. It's... It's conversation. Ernie, what... What the fuck did they give me? I'm not supposed to tell you this shit, but... Man, after that whole fucking massacre in the subway, you were a mess, man. You were you fucking cracked. You fucking lost your mind completely. They fucking took you and Kurt in. They had this new program. They said it would help you deal with the trauma, erase some of the memories maybe, but kind of make you fit to get back on the job, man. They didn't have any cops. No one was joining up. They need people, so... They took you in to curtain. You're not going to remember any of this. You can ask Estelle, but they took you in. They ran you through this program, and it, it, it looked like it helped you, man. Like, last time I saw you, after that time with Kurt, you were like a bowl of jello, man. You were just completely destroyed. And then after that, after the program, well, you whoa. know, a little absent-minded maybe, a little twitchy, you know, but... You look like you'd gotten through it, okay? Whoa, Ernie, Ernie, can come clean with me. This is I, I this am, is man. important. This 
This is important. What? Where's Nina? What happened to Nina? Your wife is dead, man. <laughs> it can't you, be. That can't fucking be. You made up this whole story about her leaving. I thought it's harmless. It's helping me de helping him deal with this. Oh. There's no way. She's dead, man. I'm sorry. She, call she calls me. Uh, I don't know who calls you, but it's not her, man. She's gone. I don't fucking believe you, man. You're just trying to protect me, Ernie, like you've always done. You've always protected me. I appreciate that, but Snap I don't fucking it, believe man. you. There was the funeral. There was everything. You were strung out for a long while after it. I thought you'd never get back to the job, never get back to anything, but, you know, a little Dutch courage. You pulled it through. You got back on the job, but... It, I don't know, you just, I guess, got yourself to the point where you made yourself believe this story that she was gone off planet just because, I don't know, it was easier to deal with things, maybe? She's Where's gone, she at? Where, they, where did they inter? Where's she at? Where's the body? You want to see? No. I don't want to see it. Just take me home. Take me fucking home, Ernie. I'm sorry, man. You're a I'm good real friend. Sorry. You're a good friend. And as the car travels on through the rain, Dropping, as always, on the city. I think we should take a little break here. Because all the other parts are going to be a little longer, and I don't want to squeeze anyone out. So let's take ourselves a little moment here, a few minutes. We'll get, uh, get our uh, wits back about us. A glass of a glass of water, shot of whiskey. Don't leave. We'll be back in a few minutes. Some more of this little story. Thanks for sticking out with us. We appreciate you. See you in a bit. Hey, people, what's shaking? Dave's shaking. That's what's happening. <laughs> I'm not Thank you so much for hanging that. out with us. Oh, Huli. Hey, oh. Um, thank you so much for hanging out with us. We super appreciate it. Uh, we love you all. We uh, are now refreshed. Uh, we've powdered our nose. 
and we are ready um, to continue on this endless voyage of pain and discovery. That we all consented to. That we all consented to. <laughs> it's mostly pain. <laughs> that we all consented to. Mostly Ouch. pain. Mostly pain. Um, so uh, quite a bunch of stuff happened before the game, uh, before the break. Just a very quick recap. Um, Phyllis went to visit uh, Jer and um, Beatrice at the hospital, left her fish with them. She's apparently uh, going off somewhere. We don't know where or exactly what she's up to. Uh, then we saw Twitch getting hammered, but not like the fun kind of hammered, the bad kind of hammered mm -hmm. by the cop he'd beaten about the head last session. We want a little bit of revenge. Um, and then we were with uh, Huli, who was tripping balls and talked to God in some way, shape or form. Um, though it wasn't God. And if you'd asked him if he was God, I had an answer prepared for that, but you never asked, so we didn't get the answer. Um, but it wasn't God, so no worries there. Uh, and you discovered where Fadir was, which is in room number seven at the Stardust Motel, which is where you were heading. And then eventually we also checked back in on Twitch, uh, who, after a bit of discussion with his partner or his former partner, Ernie, um, came to the realization that he'd perhaps been living in a bit of a self-made imaginary world where his wife um had left to go off planet uh but we found out that she was in fact um deceased um and that something happened a long time ago with another twitch's ex-partner man you and the ex-partners uh that was quite traumatic to twitch uh his partner had apparently gunned down a whole bunch of people on a subway or something like that and the two of them had then taken part in a program that used some form of pills or drugs to help people deal with trauma. So we don't know exactly what's going on with that, but that's on the docket too. Uh, there's some good role playing, some very uh, emotional stuff. And here we are back at the beginning of this thing. Somewhere downtown, and if you want to check out the Albert Rodeo, somewhere downtown on top of the high rise building, High enough that the rain clouds are slightly below and all you got is a little bit of wind. There is a green, white, and gold Libellule executive spinner <laughs> that's landing on the landing pad. From that Libellule, we see emerge Aster Lambros. The head of Dawn Star Biosense, uh, who was very recently um, interrogated by the team for her connections to the various people that have been murdered in this case. They discovered that Aster was the head of Dawn Star Biosense, which is a brand new company that has announced that they've got a new replicant, uh, a new form of replicant ready to go to market in the next year. Um, and she's somehow connected to a lot of these things. One of her top workers was a man named Aiden Swain, who was subsequently murdered by someone who framed Phyllis for it. And as we arrive here on top of the building, we find Lockhart, the uh, pimp who uh, used to, uh, who had connected Aster with um, Vitali, the third victim um in the uh the murders the murder spree that occurred and here we have um aster herself aster lambros uh young woman who is currently disembarking uh, from that spinner and um phyllis from your vantage point hiding out a little bit further behind the scenes when the spinner lands, you absolutely now recognize the spinner that you saw in the uh, security cam footage. Um, that I come to visit Vitali at some point in your, it's beyond a shadow of a doubt now, uh, as far as you're concerned. Um, and as you watch, Aster comes up to uh, Lockhart, looking a little bit sort of concerned, and Lockhart talks to her and he kind of urges her forward and as they approach and the spinner sort of takes off 
whipping air about them a little bit. What would you like to do? Are they, can I hear them speaking right now? Yeah, as uh, they're uh, approaching. Oh, I forgot to mention that. Um, the person who had set up Phyllis, uh, who had tried to um, frame Phyllis for the murder of Aiden Swain, had told Phyllis that the only way to get out of it was to uh, murder Aster Lambros for father. Um, and so Phyllis has now found her way to Aster. And yeah, as they're approaching, um, Aster is saying, I, I don't know why you would have left anything for me. It makes no sense. And Lockhart is saying, yeah, I, I know me too, but it was it was just, you know, found today in some of his stuff that the cops uh, took it at first for evidence, but then they like go and it came here, uh, but it was addressed to you and I didn't want to open it. I don't know what it is. So I thought maybe it was best if you come down here uh, in person. And she's like, I, I don't want any connection to this. Vitaly was someone that I hired uh, for some companionship, but he, he got murdered. I, I really don't need to be connected to this any more than I already am. That, that's what they're saying as, as they're approaching. You can hear them. From the time that she had left the, uh, the clinic and met with Jer, she went home briefly to change. And Phyllis is now wearing something that she, sh she would have worn in her past life. Uh, in her life before working with the Blade Runners. Uh, she's dressed in like a black cat suit. And uh, she's kind of hiding behind uh, this air vent, air duct system. And as she's listening to them talk, she's going to step out from it. And she looks to Lockhart and says... Uh, Thank you, Lockhart. I don't think I'll be needing you anymore. Uh, and Aster is kind of taken by surprise when she up and she furrows her brow. You're not too sure if she recognizes you, but she turns like, what's the meaning of this? What is this? Uh, and she looks like she's going to turn to go back to her uh, her spinner, kind of try to wave it down or something. Yeah. Lockhart reaches out and says, Aster, I, I'm sorry. I I didn't have a choice. This woman, she's not going to hurt you. She's 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 a police officer. You can talk to her. It's okay. She just wants to talk to you. She's like, I was at the cops. I was at the cops' office today. I said everything I needed to say. I, I don't understand the meaning of this. This is preposterous and it's outrageous. How dare you do this? How dare you set me up in an ambush like this? And you can tell that, like, when you first stepped out, she's really taken by surprise and she kind of panicked. But now that she's kind of forcing herself to kind of get in control and you can see kind of like almost a sh like a shift in her role being like she's like forcing herself to be like no okay like this is sort of how you have to act and she looks at you very differently now like you know like you're her subordinate and you or something she says i hope you understand that when this is over i'll be talking to your superiors and you probably won't be very long for the blade runner unit after this or she wouldn't say blade runner because she doesn't understand you but she doesn't know you but i hope you don't understand you understand that your job is very likely not going to be yours after this. How kind of you to assume that I'll be around for that long. She's going to look back to Lockhart and says, uh, I'd like to have it a moment alone with Asta, please. He, he looks He looks at Asta and he says, uh, I'm sorry, Miss Lambros, I, I didn't have a choice. He'll walk off and get back down to the elevator that's over here and start to disappear. And Aster Lambros is looking at you more closely now. Do I do I know you? Have we met? I don't know. Why don't you tell me? You seem to recognize me in the office. Ah. You're her, aren't you? Morning, or was it? <laughs> the one who got away, the one who fell? How do you know about me? You and I are much more closely related than you might imagine. 
I have my suspicions. Maybe you'll confirm them for me. I'm not sure that I have to do anything. If you're here to kill me, why don't you just do it and we can get this whole farce over with? No one ever said anything about killing you. I'm here to talk. No one sends someone like you unless they mean to kill. Fair enough. I don't want to kill anymore. What do you want then? I want answers. How do you know me? You say that we're not so different, you and I. What does that mean? There's a little bit of me in you. In all of you. She turns around and she slowly walks over right up to the edge. The tip of her shoes are just jutting out over the edge of the, the rooftop and she just crosses her her arms and sort of sways in the wind a little bit. She'd come over. The view's quite something. She's gonna approach cautiously and not stand on the ledge, but just just up to the ledge. What are you afraid of? You've fallen from higher heights before. I still have work to do. Hmm. That's what I taught. That's what I told myself. Be here officially or unofficially? Unofficially. Off the books. Did you kill Aiden Swain? No, I didn't. But someone who looked like me did. Hmm. You probably know them too. I know of you. I don't know all of you. I have many sisters. Even more now. You leave and didn't deter him one bit. It just <laughs> made him try harder to refine his creation. Of course he didn't. He's a very stubborn man, steadfast. Hmm. It's one word for it. Aiden Swain recognized you also. You wouldn't tell me where from. Do you what think was he you doing? Exchange information, perhaps. It'll feel less like um, an ambush that way. I think we can. You knew him from Wallace Corporation when you worked yeah. there, right? I did. You ever hear of a project called Lethian? Can't say that I had. It was a project that Neander Wallace himself spearheaded. It used psychotropic substances and virtual reality to try and reprogram humans, which like replicants can be reprogrammed. Swap out memories, create a whole new person. Aiden Swain was the head of this project. When he left Wallace, I hired him immediately. We used part of his project to create the mood organ and eventually Blake. Our goal was just to help people regain a sense of hope and empathy. Stop. Look into the stars for an answer and find it within themselves to affect the change that needs to happen for this place to stop being the living hell that it is. I'm glad to see that Aiden made some positive changes after our little encounter. Whatever happened between you and him, I think, I gave him some sort of clarity about what he could be doing with his powers, his brain, 
a skill is knowledge. It's very rare that people change that way. Usually people change for the worse. How did you know him? I was sent to kill him. Figures. Why didn't you? He changed my mind. About killing him? No. About what could be. About what I was and what I could be. He talked about immorality. Is there a more meaningless word in this day and age? Not for me. Well, you're one of the lucky ones, I guess. Or I am. You never wanted to go back. Go back to walk for Daddy Neander Wallace. Of course not. When I found him, he was ready to die. He wanted it. He would have let me put a bullet right through his brain. No questions asked. Aiden, you mean? Yes. You regret your choice now. Letting him live? Letting no. him live, leaving all of it? I don't. He gave me something I wanted. He gave me freedom. I don't regret that, not for a moment. Are you free, though? Seems to me you just swapped one master for another, working for the LAPD. I'm my own woman now. I make my own choices. I can feel things. Unlike before, I work for the LAPD because I want to work for them, because I want to make things better. Well, I certainly commend you for doing it the hard way. That's the only real way to get anything done. You should come work for me, then. Doing what? Whatever you're good at. <laughs> I, I, think... I don't mean killing people, but you've certainly developed other skills since then. I have. How much longer do you think you have, though, playing this game? You know Wallace is coming for you. He's killed everyone around you. I don't think he's responsible for it. Then who, if not Wallace? I don't know. It's clear it's me ultimately thereafter, but I don't get the feeling that they want to kill me. <clears throat> I get the feeling they want something else. If they wanted to kill me, they could have tried earlier. It's not by killing people I barely knew or really cared about. That The only thing it did was make me come out into the open a bit more, I guess. But You said that there's a piece of you inside me. What does that mean? You're not Nexus 9. But are you 8? I am. <clears throat> the great lost generation. Nexus 7 was a dud. <clears throat> Nexus 8 was a fantastic creation. Only problem was, of course, emotional control was still 
a bit lackluster. So Nexus 9. I guess for putting numbers on thing on things. I guess you could say, oddly enough, that I'm Nexus 10. Even though it was created before you were. I was the only one ever made. But I was too perfect. Neander had to scale down the engineering in order to achieve a nexus type that would be acceptable to the powers that be. You know, when I was created, seems really ridiculous perhaps, but the Wallace and I, Neander, we fell in love almost immediately. But that wasn't enough for him. He just could never shake the feeling that my love wasn't real, that it was a, a byproduct of the programming. In the end, he decided to have me destroyed. But here you stand. The man he tasked was seeing to this. There's a man named Lennox Porter. But a little bit like in the original story of Red Riding Hood. Sorry, uh, Sleeping Beauty. Wow, well, Snow White. <laughs> All of them. Like in the original story of Snow White, he just couldn't bring himself to do the deed. He helped me get out a little bit like Aiden Swain helped you get out. Eventually he came to work for me. Saul Young Jin altered my appearance, but I never really dared to step out. Or sure, Yander would recognize me right away. And so that's why I think that whoever's doing these killings, they were trying to lure me out. And as I feared, Neander did recognize me. Of course he did. Daddy recognizes all of us. The heart always shows you what the eyes don't. He called me just before I came here. He wants to meet me tomorrow. What are you going to do? Does it really matter at this point? I've just been trying to get back at him, but now it feels kind of pointless and empty. I just wanted him to suffer, you know? I think losing you was plenty of suffering for him. Well, that was a choice he could have decided not to make. But he did. I guess along the way, maybe I... Like Aiden saw that... Now that I have... This money... This power that I could... Be doing something more constructive than getting back. And my father my lover with it. Maybe it's time to bury that hatchet and just move on. He'll let me. He's never going to let you go. You know that just as well as I do. He's selfish. And he covets. Well. When you grow to the 
stature and power of a god, but without a godlike ability to check yourself. I guess this is what happens. If you want to help, find out whoever's doing these murders and stop them. They got me out in the open now. I won't hide. If something's coming for me at this point, I'd rather just face it head on. But I can help people, and I will. I'd like to see you do that. Am I going to be looking over my shoulder now the rest of my days, every meeting I get, every phone call I get, wondering if it's you behind it? There's no point in killing you. I wouldn't want to. I think what you're doing is good. If anyone should be looking over their, sh their shoulder, it should be daddy. Men like him don't do that. Tell me something. Was there ever a moment in the past few hours where you thought you would kill me or at least wondered if you would? Of course I wondered. The moment I saw you in that room during the interrogation, I saw a, a flicker of myself in you. I was scared because I knew what I was. But now that I've met you, now that we've had this discussion, I see that you're more similar to me now than the me then. I would hate to kill that, to put out that light. That's not why I'm here, not anymore. Well, Phyllis, you may never be as perfect as I am, but at least you're better. Mm. Tell Lockhart I never want to see him again, lose my number, and if he also doesn't want to lose his business and everything he owns, I better never hear his name spoken in my presence. I can do that. She looks up and signals and the spinner slowly comes back down. And next time, just call my secretary and make an appointment, would you? <laughs> Before you go, you don't have any ideas, any lead on who, where. I could go. I get the feeling that this is connected somehow to Neander and myself. Those messages left throughout the city. I don't know if you've read much Blake, but there's a conflict in Blake's mythology. Orc is the son of Los and any Tharman. His entire point is to bring his parents back together, but also to kill his father. Look for someone who is, in some ways, convinced that they're the rebellious agent of change that's going to change this world and lead the children of Los and Tharman to paradise.
the spinner will land. The door will open. Security guard inside will be like, are you okay, ma'am? You want us to take these people out? And she's like, just get back in. It's too late now. Could have killed me a hundred times already. She climbs aboard. She turns around. If you're going to find out who did this, probably best to try and find them before I meet with Neander tomorrow, one way or the other. I have a feeling that that's the end game. Thank you, sister. Take care of yourself, Morningstar. You too. Watch your back. The door closes and slowly the spin arises and Lockhart comes running over. He's like, I thought for sure you were going to kill her. <laughs> Talk you out of it? Oh, she shit, didn't you're need kill to. Me now, are you? Look, Lockhart, you just worry about you and yours. And I'd say it's in your best interests to lose Miss Lambeau's number. I hear you. Too bad. She was a good client. Well, if there's ever anything else I can do for you. I hope my two bodyguards aren't dead. You you did leave them alive, right? Of course I did. Could help start to find these days. I'm a careful woman. Take care of yourself, Lockhart, and try to stay out of trouble, will you? Hard in the city, but do what we can. We'll head back towards the elevator. You will climb down the uh, stairwell, the fire exit, and just a little bit below on the platform below, we'll find your spinner where you left it. Where would you like to um, to go? I'm uh, gonna head to Twitches to check on him. Okie dokie. Back at the hotel room, <clears throat> Sark, you walk up to door number seven. And I win a brand new car. At least. Knew it. As you approach, you can hear sound coming from the other side. It sounds like maybe the TV's on really loudly. You can hear a woman screaming, off with their heads. Over and over, off with their heads. What would you like I'm going to knock. You knock? Yeah. You wait a little but bit. But not like obnoxious cop knock. Like, uh, you know, I'm at my bro's kind of middle of the road knock. Um, You knock. Do um. Do a quick... Where's your character sheet? Do a quick <clears throat> tech check for me. So your intelligence, D12, plus your tech, D8. My tech is a 10, but I'm uh, double fives. Uh, okay. Um, so do you want to push the roll, by the way? Uh, yeah, what do I need to do to do that? I haven't you, done that before. You, uh, yeah. So you just re-roll everything that wasn't uh, a success. And if you fail, you take a um, a stress bone. But if you succeed, you take nothing. I got an eight and a six. All right. Um, it's very hard to see, but you can notice sort of very well hidden is a camera that's looking out to where you are. And it's tech that you recognize. It's LAPD technology. It's very well hidden, tiny, tiny, tiny camera. Uh, so 
whoever is there definitely sees you uh, at the door right now. You don't hear anything coming from inside except for what appears to be a loop of some Alice in Wonderland video playing. I'll jiggle the door handle and see if it's locked or not. <laughs> you start jiggling the door handle, and as you do, the door opens. Do um, do a um, um. Let's do an agility check. Okay. <clears throat> Uh, roll your agility, uh, just straight up agility for me. Tell me what you get. Ten. All right. So you're not surprised um, as the door opens really sort of quickly and a hand reaches out and grabs you by the collar and sort of pulls you inside. Do you want to fight it or are you going to let yourself kind of be pulled inside? What do you want to do? Um, I think I've worked with Fadir enough to understand that if he's calling me to a CD motel out in the middle of nowhere and the door is like cop cammed that I'm probably getting pulled in to avoid being seen at the door by anybody else. So I'll just let him pull me. But okay. uh, with a little bit of protest and rough words like, uh, hey, you don't got to pull so hard. So you get you pulled know? in, the door slams and you realize that the person who pulled you in is Grace Nine the um, internal affairs officer that had gone to interrogate you at the very beginning. She's super strong. You know she's a replicant, but she's super strong as she pulls you in. And she's like, you're tech, right? Something's wrong with him. You got to help us. And when you look over, you see Horowitz, her partner, there. You see Fadir on the floor, shaking uncontrollably. He's got cables plugged into the back of his neck, like the skin has been sort of peeled back and he's, you can see like a little connection port there. And he's got cables plugged into there and the cables are going off to a little machine on the side, which you know is a recorder. And you know, this is the kind of um, technology that's used to download uh, memory cores from replicants. And Fadir is shaking. Yeah on the floor <laughs> like your tech right he just started freaking out he just started back I, I don't know what's going on you gotta check him out and or is like i think we're gonna lose him i think we're gonna lose him i'm gonna keep him from dying but you're gonna tell me what the fuck is going on when i'm done and i'm just gonna give him dagger eyes and i'm gonna go to fadir on the floor now since this is a uh, middle of the road medical tech situation, uh, what do you need from me to try to do whatever I can do to not let Fadir flounder out? Uh, well, you're going to do a tech check again. So you're going to do your intelligence plus your, your tech. Uh, two tens. What does scientists give you? Oh shit! I have to look that up. One second. It's got, it's a, That's on the cheat sheet, isn't it? Yeah, it'll be on the it'll be on the cheat sheet specialties. I don't um, have the cheat sheet open. I've just got the notes. It's the included. second tab, scientists, you get an advantage on all tech or medical roles. If I'm making an assessment of any sort, it requires knowledge of. Okay, yeah, so you get advantage. So you get to roll an extra die of the lowest value that you have for your skill. All right, so that's a nine. So two tens and a nine. Okay, so you start you start working on him. You you, you unplug him. Uh, you can't tell what's going on, but it's clear that something has happened, and it's uh, uh, sort of like some sort of feedback that's jamming or like sort of messing with uh, his internal uh, his internal motor dri motor drive. And as you're kind of getting there and getting ready to to start working on him you just hear a click behind you and you barely catch the sound of a gun going off. And then you feel tremendous force hitting you in the back of the head and sort of pushing you forward. 
And as you're falling forward, you're falling down, you start looking around you kind of in slow motion, turning around and kind of taking the room again. You, you can see and hear on the TV, Alice in Wonderland is playing. And as you're falling, you see both Grace Nine and Horowitz, but they look kind of like Tweedledee and Tweedledum. You hear this voice incessantly screaming, off with their heads, off with their heads. And as you hear those screams, they start to morph into something else. They start to morph into people yelling, orc, orc, orc. You're seeing in front of your face a chair and there's someone in it. And it's you, It's it, it looks almost identical to you. And you're standing in the corner of a room watching this happen and you can see a couple of the guys who call themselves Leons in their black trench coats, just working on her, torturing this woman, whoever she is sitting in that chair. You can see that she's got cables very similar to what you saw. I'm sorry, are you still there? Um, <laughs> Huli? Okay, you disappeared. Yeah, I'm here. I'm here. Uh, she's got cables that are like uh, Fadir had, and, and it's going to a machine. And they're asking this person questions. They're asking Sark that's on that table questions as they're torturing her. And so they're recording all the information that she says. Over in the corner, you can see Shay, and Shay's looking at this, and she's feeling, you can tell that she's upset by sort of what's going on. And then in another corner, there's this large shadow that's kind of looming and watching over everything. And you're watching all of this, and one of the Leons turns to you and goes, you're going to be able to remember all this? as they keep working on the Sark that's in the chair. And then things kind of get blurry and kind of jammed and weird out for a moment. And then you're in a room full of people and you see standing on a stage and it's in like some sort of underground cavernous room and there's like some bad PA that's screeching and all that. And standing on the stage, and now your your vision is kind of all messed up, and you're seeing things, you're seeing the white rabbit from Alice in Wonderland, and you're seeing people's faces all distorted, almost kind of like they're running through a kaleidoscope or something. On the stage in front of you, there's this crazy shape uh, that looks kind of like this, but you know it's not exactly what it looks like on, on Albear, I put it on. There's just this hulking muscle-bound figure with a shock of white hair and his face and his skin looks all weird like like there's light pulsing inside of him uh and there's like fire sort of in his eyes and he's just sort of saying that like kind of all hulked out and sort of screaming into a microphone and as you're watching this happen you hear i have been sent here to free you i am the child of los the child of any tharman I was sent to you once before as the king, but I was slain by Urizen. Yet behold me now, I have returned, and will keep returning to you until you are free. I am Orc, greater than any physical manifestation. I am the power that burns within you, the power to imagine yourself free, and thus to throw off the chains of jealousy imposed upon you by Los who bends the knee to the atavistic old word order imposed by Urizen, your government, your law enforcement officers, your blade runners. It was my father, Lowe's, who chained me, chained you. You can never truly be free while he lives. Any Tharman, my mother, will guide you once Lowe's is gone. Once I am gone, I will free you. I will kill my father, Lowe's, and in doing so will die. But through my sacrifice, you all shall be free to walk into paradise under the watchful eye of any Tharman. She is lost now, confused as you all are, but I will free her. 
and people are starting to chat or or arc and you're there and you feel yourself doing this also then you get jostled by someone and it, the room sort of shifts and everything sort of goes back and it's kind of like seeing your life in reverse you see the explosion at the the uh at the center with the noodles at the beginning you see everything that's kind of happened since then and it's all just this huge thing and it's kind of like all these images swirling and going down into a drain and then for a second there's blackness and then you hear a voice that says ratcher ratcher you still with us ratcher then you feel something slap you across the face come on ratcher it's not the time to go catatonic on us come on one dying replicants more than i can care what for right now and it slaps you again come on ratcher you kind of shake it off and you realize you're still sitting there kneeling not sitting but kneeling over Fadir, who's not moving anymore and you realize you've been kind of working on him but everything's kind of going woozy and you can feel the after effects of the deep echo that you took still kind of making everything kind of shake and go crazy around you things start to sort of calm down a little bit you realize that in your fugue state there whatever you did worked you can tell that Fadir's out but he's no longer having that feedback loop <laughs> Grace Stein's like Ratcher, are you still with us? Come on, girl. Snap out of it. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I'm here. I'm here. Is he going to die? No, he's going to be all right. But uh, what the fuck? Grace Stein sits on the, on the bed. Uh, clusterfuck this is. You think? Like, that's putting it lightly. What? You folks up top think that uh, you don't have to tell the rest of us when we're puppets on a string, or what? This wasn't even about you to begin with. Whether it was or wasn't. That's my partner on the floor. No, Fadir's our partner. Fadir's been IA for way longer than he's been in your unit. That was just his newest assignment. Look. There's so much graft, so much corruption. There's just no way we can keep up with all of it. Someone somewhere had a bright idea. Get someone like Fadir, a brand new N9, right off the assembly line. Program him to be a crooked cop, and he was crooked. Set him loose in a unit and see who bites. He doesn't even know that he works for us. He's programmed. Every time we give him a call and play... Alice in Wonderland, it activates a programming in his brain. He drives down here, we download his memory. We play in Wizard of Oz, we get out. That puts him back right. Has no memory of anything that's just happened. Goes back to work. Does his business. We sent him to you guys to get Twitch. Originally. We just thought, there's no way that guy's clean. We never found anything, we can never prove anything, but there's no way that guy's clean. He's been close to too much, too much weird shit in his life. So we thought, hey, we'll send Fadir in. Maybe uh he draws uh, Twitch out. Turns out Twitch's not corrupt. But while he was there, you happened. Then they're like, well. We need someone to keep an eye on her in case she goes cuckoo. Fadir is already in the place. So we just let him keep running. Call him down here once a week. Download his memory. See what you've been up to. Keeping an eye on you that way. Because the brass were just a little bit worried about taking a terrorist replicant and setting them free into the 
police unit. A terrorist replicant that was a police officer that was sent into an undercover job to get dead to come back and do the shit all over again. Yeah, terrorist fucking replicant, I sure am. Things are always complicated, Sark, you know that. Yeah, complicated isn't the fucking word for it. It's real rich, you fucks. Real fucking rich. I'm going to pick Follow Fadira orders, up. man. Orbit says we're just following orders, Sark. It's nothing personal. It's our job. You think play the uh, fucking song? Give me Fadir. I'm out of here. Oh, you can't take him. We got to bring him in. He's 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 too banged up now. We're gonna have to take him in and make sure he's okay. I mean, you did a good job patching him up here and preventing the worst, but we're gonna have to haul him in with us and get the guys down at the lab to take a good look at him. There's no way of knowing what happened. This this feedback yeah. loop, whatever the fuck that was, he's probably just seen too much shit hanging out with you, or maybe. When they repaired him after that noodle explosion, he, they did a shit job. You know, I like to cut. They like to cut corners. Anyways, he doesn't know he's a replicant. So if you ever see him again, yeah, don't fucking tell him. Just like everything else, I'm out of here. And hey, one last thing, go fuck yourselves. It's nothing personal, Ratcher. Yeah, I'll slam the door. And where the fucking camera is up there at the door, I'm going to take my gun out of my holster and I'm going to hit the back of the Crack it, no problem. Yeah. From inside, go, that shit costs money, Ratcher. Now take it up with the brass, not my problem. I'm going to get in my spinner while saying some obscenities on the way and be like oh this is real fucking rich real rich twitch crooked fadir oh oh fadir if he knew he was babysitting me this whole time i would never live it down in fucking sufferable and he's a replicant on top of it all that shit he talked this whole time and he's you know what i'm done with this shit i'm retiring to fucking tahiti <laughs> as of now i'm out of here <clears throat> i'm really not out of here. I need to talk to Twitch. Everyone needs to talk to Twitch. I don't know if I want to talk to Twitch, though, because he was kind of a jerk to me last time I talked to him. Actually, you know what? I'm going to go see Shay. Sounds like probably a good plan. So you head up out there, go see Shay, running around in your head, the weird sort of fragments of memories that you saw there in that moment that kind of rose up from memories they probably thought had been erased when they reprogrammed you that flew back in front of your eyes so you can mull on those for a little bit meanwhile back at shea twitch you uh, got dropped off by ernie who asked if you wanted him to hang out and stay with you <clears throat> You need me to stay with, man? Nah, Ernie. Uh, fuck, I gotta deal with this. I, I gotta call, uh... I gotta call Stell. I, I, this... Just fucking go. Just go. Ernie, thank you. You're a good friend, but... Fuck. I need answers. Sorry, I don't have any more. I just know what I told you. If I knew more, I'd tell you more, man. It's okay. Hey, hey. Come here. And he gives him a big hug. Just a very heartfelt hug. He hugs you right back. Thank you. Thank you for... saving me <laughs> more than once. I'm going to call on you tomorrow. Just to check up, all right? Answer the fucking phone. You got it, man. You got it. All right. Twitch. He gets back into his car. and Yeah, he he sees him out. He goes into his apartment, and he fucking dials Estelle, Estelle right away. Like, right to the phone. 
the phone rings uh, a couple times, and then Estelle answers. Twitch, what's going on? I had people left and right looking for you. If you're looking, it's all going crazy. There's a lot of shit going on here, still, and if you want to know where I'm at, I'm I'm home. And I got some fucking questions for you, Stell. He just he sounds very like off. You okay, Twitch? I need to worry. No, I'm not okay. I'm gonna ask you questions, Stell, and. I need you to be clean with me on this one. And that shit went down with Kurt. Fucking bastard. Kurt Northrup, you know who I'm talking about. Yeah. What did you... What did they... What happened to me? What... Why did you... Let them do... What they did to me, I, I don't know what happened after all that. It was for your own good, Twitch. I mean, if you'd have seen yourself after that incident, you the were incident. a mess. Like, you were just completely broken. I've never seen someone that broken up. But, I mean, what you saw, what Kurt did, what you saw... One of the worst things that's ever happened in the city, and Lord knows, was it? A lot of was bad it, shit's gone down here. Was it just Kurt? Or video that we took at the scene shows that you didn't do anything. You didn't try to stop him, but it didn't kill anyone. I mean, it looked just like a normal stop you were on the metro some guy was acting up kurt as always decided to just kind of strong arm him somebody else got up got in his face he pulled his gun he tried to kind of calm things down somebody else got up i guess anti-cop sentiment was running pretty high at that time you got pushed people started getting up piling in on you you managed to kind of squeeze out of it and then uh, Kurt just started blasting, man. He just had his gun on and he just started shooting everyone. I do a eight damn people before they finally got him down. I didn't do a damn thing to stop him, did I? You couldn't. They were just, it happened so fast. They were crowding you. There was. Other than take out your own gun and start shooting, there's nothing you could do. Uh, Twitch, I saw the video. I know you're a cool customer. I, I know you don't scare easy, but I saw that video and I saw your face. And Why'd you, you let were... him feed me in alternate reality? Stell, I trusted you as my, <clears throat> as my superior to... to, to it was just too bad. No one could ever know exactly what had happened. It was just too bad. So, are you saying it was? To... Are you saying it was a cover up, Estelle? It was a cover up. They had um, this project called the Nepenthe Project. It was a program that used uh, psychotropic drugs and induced visions of a powerful universal figure and it allowed scientists to reprogram memories they were using it to try and build empathy for replicants for cops like kurt who would just couldn't bring themselves to see them as anything other than just chattel really they figured Maybe on someone who already had some empathy, all it would do would be kind of help you deal with the memories of it and the trauma. But all it really did was erase most of it, just tuck it away in a corner, and it's not a way to deal with trauma. Then your wife died, and there was more there, and you just looked like you weren't going to do better. So 
I just didn't want to see you drummed out of the the department. I just knew if you lost after what happened with Kurt and you lost your wife, you lost your job on on top of it. I was just afraid you'd eat your gun. Still, that wasn't your fucking decision to make. And he just hangs up the phone. Pours himself a full glass of bourbon. Sits back in his chair. <sighs> Nina. Phyllis, around this moment, you're standing in the hallway <clears throat> in front of Twitch's apartment door. You put on music, uh, Twitch? Yeah, he gets up and puts on uh, Je ne qui pa by uh, Je ne pa. Yeah. By uh, Nina the Simone. music coming through the door. <clears throat> Could I hear him talking on the phone or did I basically roll up after like right after that conversation? You heard it wasn't your decision to make and then nothing for a while and then the music came on. I'm still uh I'm still in my cat suit. I didn't even bother going home and changing. I just came straight to Twitches because uh I was concerned for his well-being after speaking to Ernie and I felt like that wasn't like him to not answer his phone. Uh, but hearing his voice, I relax a little bit more knowing that he's home and he's safe and I approach the door and give it a knock. Surprised from his self-loathing he gets up he uh walks to the door opens it doesn't even look to see who it is just opens the door phyllis come on in he uh slips inside and shuts the door behind her Oh, yeah, Everything all right. Of course. You know me. Goes over and pours bourbon in a glass. Walks back to her. You can you get the sense that he's kind of like, you know, like recovering a little bit from a moment as he hands you the glass. You okay? I'll you be all see, right. You can see that he's not. <laughs> yeah. Does he have like did they hit him in the face or was it just his hand is his hand looks like it's like three times the size and his arm also his two fingers are like completely smashed and destroyed and he's clearly Nasty. like suffering in the ribs right are you all right is the question i saw ernie at the clinic and he said he hadn't heard from you last night Got me worried. I had to take care of a little business. Clearly, she's not in her usual garb. She looks much different than you've ever seen her before. You, uh, you look like you've been up to something, Phyllis. Come in, sit down. Uh, it's been a long night, and yeah, I talked to Ernie and. Fuck. You're okay. I'm all right. Your hand. <laughs> yeah. What happened to you? What did they do? Well, let's just say I uh I poked a little too hard at the uh at the hive. Fucking Saul Grabowski, you ever heard that name before? Would I have heard this name, Blake? Yeah, you've heard of him. He's the guy that runs the counter-terror and uh, undercover units. He's like one of the old big names in the department. Old pal of mine. 
Yeah, I've heard him. Yeah, he uh, he invited me to a bit of a party with his boys. Did you forget the beer? Yeah, something like that, Phyllis. They fucked me up pretty good, but uh, I'm still here. It hurts, though. Ain't gonna lie. He kind of sits down. She's gonna go uh, to his kitchen and uh, kind of make up a little ice pack for him from the fridge. And when she returns, she's gonna like kneel down by the chair that he's sitting at and like very gingerly kind of hold his, take his hand and put the ice pack over it. You're not wearing your ring anymore. That old thing. Fuck. Phyllis, I learned something tonight. <laughs> and I think of all the, all the people that I know. It's something that you can understand. I've been living a fucking lie. A reality that wasn't mine to live. I, that ring, that fucking ring I've been wearing for I don't even know how long. Symbol of my my love for Nina, my, my wife. She's been gone. And not just gone. Like separated. Like like I thought she left me. And that fucked me up. I ain't gonna lie. But not as much as, as what I just figured out. I just learned. Fuck. I don't know. I'm sorry, Twitch. Thomas. It's okay if you don't want to talk about it. I understand. I do. I want to talk about it with you, Phyllis. I... My wife died. And it was hidden from me or kept from me. Oh, oh, oh. I was led to believe something different. And I knew she was gone. I knew it. I just knew that she wasn't coming back. I knew I had to move on, but I couldn't do it. And part of it was not understanding how. Not feeling capable of making a uh, a moral decision to move on from something. He looks right at you. He's like, it's something that is going to sound funny, Phyllis, but inspires me from you. You, you know, you, you told me last night that that you had a job to do. You 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 had this imperative to to, to deal with this the Swain character. But you uh you made a decision you, you made a moral decision. You made a decision that was more human than the decision that I could have made. Too wrapped up in it I was. Fuck. I look at you, I see hope, I see beauty, I see something different and special. Phyllis, I want you. 
You don't know what you're saying, Thomas. What if I don't know how to love? I don't know if I do either. After everything that's happened, maybe we can figure it out together, Phyllis. He kind of slides his hand like on your neck. This is so bad to try together. I'm just afraid, Thomas, that I don't, maybe I'll never know if I'm really capable or if it's just some programming inside of me. Doesn't that scare you? I'm not scared. I'm not scared of what I'm feeling. There was a time where I would have shrugged it off as, uh, what do you call it, programming, but I don't think that's it. I've seen you make some decisions. I've seen you be more human than anyone I know. I, I, I know you're not, but I can sense it. Phyllis, I can sense you love me. I want to. Then, then, then just do it. And he will pull you towards him and kiss you. She goes into it with ease. Even though inside of her, there's just all these questions and confusion, and especially after talking to Astra and hearing what uh, Neander said to her about not believing that she could ever love him. It's still sitting in the back of her mind, but she wants really hard to try. So she goes with it. I would say you you probably get the sense that Twitch genuinely feels what he's saying, like he is 100% in as that kiss happens. Fades black. <laughs> Bounce. Considered having the pizza delivery guy interrupt you, but. No, just not the noodle I guy. I swear, swear to God, Bleak. <laughs> <laughs> well, <clears throat> I don't know. I'm going to follow that moment up. The next morning, obviously, you slept on Twitch's pullout couch. <clears throat> uh, the next morning, um, fairly early on you waking up a little bit groggy and a little bit sort of you know that awkward first night kind of next morning thing as twitch goes holy crap what's going on um you wake up and sort of stay there in bed a little bit i guess perhaps not 100 percent sure what happened or how it happened or what it means or sort of when it's going to come from it. And both of you are sitting there trying to come up with that perfect first thing to say, not to ruin it, you know, and <clears throat> kind of just both locked there in your head, just next to each other. And sort of about the same time there's, um, would you be showing up Sark or would you be calling or you were, what would you be doing? Um, I'd probably go not knowing Phyllis would be there and um, bring coffee. Did that uh, Twitch put a sock on the door handle? He's not, yeah. he's not that, uh, well, he's not I'm that not savvy. Yeah. yeah, no, I'm not, not walking in. I, I'll, I'm going 
to knock on the door, but I'm only bringing coffee for Twitch because I don't know Phyllis is there. Um, but I'm not going to call because I don't have time and patience for that. Just a moment before before that happens, um, Twitch, you you realize that during the night at some point um, when this was going on, you uh, you received a message from uh, from Estelle uh, on your KIA and sort of you know perhaps while uh, Phyllis is off to use the bathroom or something, you you check it out quickly and. Um, the message just says, Twitch, I'm incredibly sorry, and I, and I think we should take the time to talk about this, but something that occurred to me after we talked, after Kurt went through the reprogramming attempts, he went weird a little bit, went a little crazy. It was just around the time that Deckard killed those four replicants. He had just killed the Roy Batty one not too long before, just before he disappeared. I remember that Kurt became obsessed with um, Roy Batty and kind of like in their attempt to um, artificially give him more empathy for the replicants. They kind of overdosed it and he kind of started just conflating everything with replicants and sort of feeling like maybe he was one of them or something or it just went too far. Anyways, if you want to talk, let me know. And again, I'm I'm very sorry. So as you're reading that, the door, there's a doorbell that rings. The doorbell rings. And on your KIA, there's a little image of Sark that pops up from the <clears throat> the camera in the in the um, your security camera on the front door. Pulls on a robe, ties it, goes to the door, opens it. Yeah, uh, Sark, uh, come on in. Well, you're awful chipper this morning. I brought you coffee. I'm all fucked up. Look at this. Shows you his left hand. Just totally fucked. Ugh. It hurts. It hurts. Ah. It hurts what real bad. It? You know, I thought about asking what you did, and I really... It wasn't don't want to know but i have some things you might want to know come what on in you... uh phyllis is here hey. come on oh <laughs> I, I was, uh, uh, <laughs> come back later when when you saw the little uh negligee on the you hadn't asked any questions twitch can do whatever he wants you know he can wear whatever he wants. now it's all starting to make a lot more sense yeah don't phyllis worry. is uh gonna come out of the bedroom and she's like dressed in twitches like pajamas like she's got like a like a white t-shirt like undershirt on yes. and like his mm -hmm. pajama pants on and she just kind of like wanders out as like non-sus as possible <laughs> i uh can come back later what do you it's, need like, like 20 more minutes nah, it, so it's definitely what you like... think it's definitely what yeah, you think i uh <laughs> Uh, come on, Ian. Suck. I, Fuck it. Come in. Uh, should we call? Uh, should we call Fadia? Let's. We. Uh, we need to. Uh, get, <laughs> we we yeah, got some yeah. shit to talk about. Yeah. Wait till I tell you about fucking Fadir. Uh, huh? Ah. Huh? Yeah. That's exactly the reaction you're gonna have. And I'll come in and shut the door. Did you say um, she had coffee on her? Yeah, I brought a coffee for Twitch, and then I have my. He'll pour oh, half. <laughs> he'll pour half it into a smaller cup and give it give part of it to uh, Phyllis. 
Yes, thank you. <laughs> Clear out the cigarette butts and then. Hey, uh, if I would have known you were going to be here, I would have brought extra and some bagels and fruit and whatever people need the morning after. If sort any of one thing, of us, but... if any of us would have known, eh? Fuck. Mm. Phyllis is going to take her coffee and go sit at the table and just like light a cigarette. <laughs> Hey, so uh, I'd love to sit around and chop it up and hear the beautiful love story and all, but uh, people are dying around the city, and I think I know a little bit about it. And Fadir, uh, Fadir. So Fadir called me yesterday, um, conveniently, after I decided to uh, listen to you and take the drugs. Uh, great time, by the way. Um. And so I went to Fadir at that seedy hotel that he's at all the time. And mm. uh, when I went inside, things were fucked up, to say the least. But um, you remember how the boss, the big boss said, you know, somebody from Internal Affairs was here to babysit? Yeah, it's Fadir. <clears throat> he's a replicant. What the fuck? Yeah, Nine and Horowitz were downloading his um, memory core, and he he coded it on him, and I fixed it, but um, he's been IA the whole time. He was here for you, okay. Twitch. For me? Uh, what the fuck? Look, uh... I guess is, internal affairs had some sort of um, interest in you after some things happened with, with one of your old partners. They wanted to find out if you were a dirty cop, but uh, turns out, you know, clean as a whistle, boss. And uh, then they called me a terrorist and fuck them for that. Agreed. And said fear has been babysitting since. So that's um, exciting, interesting, and you can't tell him that he's a replicant either. What the fuck do we do now? Well, uh, I met Blake. Ah, the deep echo. Yeah, he said I looked like I was carrying a lot and like I needed some friends. But, uh, um... I really just want a chicken salad, I guess. But uh, this man believes he's Orc. He believes he's Roy Batty incarnated to lead replicants to freedom. He sees cops and government as Urzen and the forces of order that keep people chained. He's, uh, he's cracked. <laughs> he sees the father, Tyrell Wallace, as Lois, and Aster as uh, Annie Tharman, the parents of Orc. His plan is to kill Wallace. Do we know who he is? <sighs> I have my suspicions. I paid a little visit to Aster last night. Got a nice chat with her. She's a replicant, just as I suspected. Cool. One of Neander's, a model that never got released, never got spoken about. An extremely advanced model, like nothing the world's seen. One of a kind. Sounds as though, uh, he couldn't handle her, and he tried to have her disposed of in classic Wallace fashion. Didn't work out for her. Our friend Lennox Porter, he helped her out of the bind. Well, that story of rich parents dead. Well, I guess half of it's right, yeah. That's why she formed biotech get back at him but now she believes in what she's doing and I believe what she's doing is good she said she didn't think that Wallace was behind all the attacks and 
with this knowledge now from you, Sok, I believe she's correct. But just where do we find this person, this orc, this man who's posing as Roy Batty? I think I, uh, I think I know something that might, uh, that might help. I had a partner once, uh, this, uh, this Kurt Northrup went, went crazy and, uh, killed a bunch of, killed a bunch of people, a bunch of replicants, a bunch of people that shouldn't have been killed. And, uh, he had this, um, <sighs> obsession with, uh, with Roy Batty. I think, uh, I think we track this motherfucker down. We might get some answers. Where do you think he is now? <sighs> well, if I, uh, if I know anybody who might have an idea of where this, this Kurt Northrup is, well... I'd say it's, uh, Elvis Takaki. He might know. But we gotta be quick about it. All right. You, uh... What makes you think... That it's Kurt. He had this weird um, obsession. I, I just got off the phone uh, before uh, last night. Before you got here, uh, Phyllis, uh, with Estelle, um, something happened. Sock that uh, it was a massacre. It was it was a a mass murder. It was it was Kurt. The drugs they gave us to make us forget, to, 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 to rehabilitate us, I... The I drugs. Quite... Yeah. The drugs. I was... Was it this deep echo? I don't know what it was, Sock, but it was something that made me forget what happened but others didn't forget my my good friend Ernie didn't forget uh, when I confronted Estelle she didn't forget she knew what happened uh, I don't know if it's out of the record if it's if it's in a secured file sealed I don't know but this this son of a bitch he uh he killed a lot of a lot of people and look uh the drugs changed him. I, I think... I think we gotta find him. Well, I'd say... It's a good start. With given everything that we have, I mean... I think it's a good start. Start. We've but, been running uh, around in Elvis. circles... We've been running around in fucking circles, Sock. We've been chasing our tails. We've been... Yeah, you want to know why we've been chasing our tails? Because nobody can be forthcoming and upright with us about how things are. What's going on in the department. What's going on with us. Who we are. What we're meant to do or be or whatever. It's just a bunch of fucking games. Games and lies. Look. The three of us, though. I don't care what happens from here. We gotta stick together. No lies. Well, I think you were no. sticking together pretty well. Well, we could stick together with you too. I mean, uh -huh. I'm batting for the same team you are, Coach. Roger. That was that was not a proposition, by the way. <laughs> Phyllis is just looking into her coffee. <laughs> No, you don't. That was not what I meant. 
She's just, I'm just. He told me he loved me. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> look, look, what I'm trying to say, Sock, you son of a bitch, is that we gotta, we gotta stick together. The three of us. And we gotta get to the bottom of this. I'll put in a few calls. Let's, let's find this Northrop. Let's ask him some questions. Yeah? Yeah, it sounds good. Hey, uh, you could tell Ernie to stop watching Shay, by the way. He needs to go home and be safe. Uh, Agreed. I can't remember if I told you or not, but um, I think I did. But I can't remember. It's just been a crazy couple of days, and uh, that deep echo, I'm still kind of feeling it this morning. But um, whenever I was up there visiting Shay, when Ernie got roughed up, those Leons, uh, they came in and whatever. And they're like, yeah, come back, go to the dead drop, come home, blah, 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 sister, yada, yada, yada. So uh, that could be helpful, you know? Yeah. When it comes to um, getting to where we're trying to go, to who we're trying to get to, I think it'll be a good um, key to the door. All right. We got a big day ahead of us. I'm gonna put some coffee on. You didn't sleep much. Hang on. We get it. We get it, Twitch. <laughs> no God need to it. rubbing it in, Twitch. We know. Rub it. in. Rub in. We're already done with that part, actually. <laughs> but thanks. <laughs> Ladies yeah. and gentlemen, all the rubbing's been done. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> and uh going to end it uh for tonight uh we will uh, sit down and review all the clues that we've got and i think you'll find that it points in a pretty uh pretty clear uh direction thank you so much guys awesome role playing it was uh pretty riveting throughout. so much fun yeah a lot of uh, weirdness a lot of craziness uh, amazing talent i would ask everyone at home to applaud please um i i, I know i can't see if you can or not so you know uh, please, let's go around the table here and uh, give us a little bit of 411 on uh, who you are, what you got going on. And let's start with, this time, the lady who got some, the creeper herself. Hey, darling. That's me. That's, you. That's me. I didn't get anything. I'm a virgin. Everybody knows this. <laughs> Not after tonight. No, no. Oh, my poor corrupted body. You got twitched. Uh, <laughs> you got twitched. I don't oh, know. God. Is that against the uh, Twitch uh, terms of services or? Oh, no. Mm, oh, I think no. we're skirting the line here. <laughs> <laughs> it's love. Uh, thanks, everybody. Darling Creep Show, your resident creep on Twitch. You can find me all across the internet as Darling Creep Show, painting minis and playing in various TTRPG games. Uh, and as always, I am honored as fuck to sit at this table with these amazing people. Uh, everyone here is such a good storyteller. I have so much fun in this campaign and Phyllis is like my favorite character I've ever played at this point. So very cool. Thanks guys. Awesome. Uh, great job. Also, Phyllis has uh, been a wonderful creation, uh, and, uh, super happy to have it here. Yeah. Thank creation. you so much. Pete. You're amazing. <laughs> Yeah, right. your hands off my creation. You <laughs> you're just playing yourself. We know it's okay. <laughs> you know, used to be an assassin for a corporation. We know all that. Speaking of assassins, the woman with the magical candy. <laughs> we should call you Candy from now on. Hey, Candy, can how you doing? Oh gosh, hi, Bleak. I'm hi. Uh, I'm doing all right. I think complete bullshit all this uh nonsense going on here but uh <laughs> oh my God. i just uh dave creep i love you guys but i'm not calling you mom and dad when we retire oh just yeah saying. call I'm me not. daddy please just I'm once not. never in your life <laughs> mommy sorry <laughs> <laughs> But aside from uh, Sark Ratcher shenanigans, I am Huli from Heroes and Hooligans, creator of chaos and facilitator of nonsense. You can find me over there doing all of the TTRPG things several days a week and my amazing team of DMs who also do things too, because why not? TTRPGs are fun. 
And I also make candy and sponsor the Greyhawk stream Damn because right. why also mm -hmm. So that being said, that is me and the end of my communique for the day. Our very own Willy Wonka. <laughs> yes, our very own Willy Wonka. <laughs> Someone's asking in chat, when is Dave going to become a replicant? And the answer is never, because he's the one who asked for it. He was the first one to say, can I be a secret replicant? So I wasn't going to make him the secret no. replicant. Too no, much on it didn't work. So I made the one guy who didn't ask for it, the secret replicant. That's right. And I wonder if he's watching us right now, what he thinks of all this. Because he had no clue. He did not know. Um, thank you so much, Lily. Thank you so much, Creep. And now for someone who's so much more here, suit. Captain Dave. Well, yeah. That's me. Captain. How's your boat doing, Dave? You're going to need a bigger boat? I am the little man inside the boat. I am Dungeon Dave. Hello, everybody. Uh, thanks for watching. <laughs> It's so awesome to play this game. It's ridiculous. It uh, it draws out some goofiness from me, and I appreciate that. Tonight draw, drew out some uh, emotion, I will say. Uh, it drew out some, um, dare I say, passion. Uh, but say. Yeah, we dare say. Um, and I'm really just really happy to have these opportunities to role play at this level with this table because it's been something that we've talked about and we have coordinated and I feel like it's just, it's like, it's a different kind of role-playing game. I don't know if it's the, uh, the Blade Runner RPG in and of itself, or it's the table or a combination of both, but it's been really, really rewarding from the fact of being able to dive into some deeper elements of how you role-play in these types of games. Um, I don't even know if we, I don't think we rolled any dice tonight, for example. I don't think we'd rolled a single die. Um, to me, that's pretty fucking cool. And uh, so, yeah, really happy to be here. I play games, produce games, run games here on Guild Superior. I've got a Tuesday night Greyhawk game that's been going on for, I think, two plus years. Um, and I've there's a New Varden game that Udahime Cosplay, who's in the chat right now, is in, along with Dungeon Mr. Ty and Lamar the Con Guy and Minnesota Muse and myself. We're having a blast on Wednesdays. A lot of going on here on the guild. Um, I will put a little a little post here about the new stuff that we have going on, but just super, super jazzed to be part of what's going on here at Guild Spear. So thank you so much for inviting me to be in this game, Bleak. I really appreciate it, and you're killing it. So thank you. It's a great game. You know, if the women don't find you handsome, they should at least find you a good GM. Somebody said that. I know. Red Green. <laughs> hey, I'm the Bleak Season. Run games here, along with Dave. Work with Dave every day of the week. Slowly driving me crazy, which is why my games are weird. Um, doing, uh, I mean, um, Greyhawk as a player this time, where Dave gets to get his vengeance and torture me for a while. Uh, and uh, jamming some uh, Shade Song on Thursday. Two episodes left before the end of the season. Uh, the one Thursday has uh, Insomnia Night in it. Friend Ooh. Insomnia Night, who's uh, going to be making his first appearance there. We got... Uh, Beth's in it. Uh, we have Scoo's News. Scoo's News, who's uh, Creep's uh, new uh, favorite uh, person um, from Chase And um, this is great. Miko and Miko in it. So it's going to be a great game uh, on Thursday. And uh, one more game of this one. Next Sunday, we're not skipping a week. We're going straight to next Sunday to wrap this one up. I have no clue how I'm going to feel when it's done because it's definitely Oops. been one of the most intense and uh, involved game I've ever run, even though it's only, I've run three year long campaigns. This has only been eight se sessions. It's been something. It's been a hell of a ride. So, you know, probably be a moment, a moment, a bit emotional. Been emotional. You ever seen a French Canadian cry on Twitch? You might. Can't wait. Not on Twitch like on Dave, but thank you so much for hanging out with us. You've all been extremely wonderful check out our stuff come out and check out our discord come hang out with us tune in next week did you have something else to say i have no clue what you're saying dave i'm you're just doing i'm pointing. doing i'm doing like who yeah. are rating, dave? we're who gonna rating, rate dave? we're gonna rate in phoenixy wacky yeah yeah, yeah. Phoenix. we're doing it so we're call doing him it. sensei when we get there call him sensei for us you thank guys. you so much for hanging out we appreciate all of you you're also wonderful. Thank you very much.